This is Valley News Live at 4. We begin this afternoon with breaking news. A Fargo nightclub is in danger of losing its liquor license after police pointed out a pattern of crime. The Africa International Restaurant and Nightclub was the site of a shooting back in May that left an employee dead. But the club has been on the Fargo Police Department's radar long before then. The chief met with Africa's owners on March 11th after seeing a spike in the number of calls from the club. Those included noise complaints, assaults over intoxication, and letting minors into the bar. Now the Liquor Control Board has recommended the city commission suspend their license. We'll have much more on this developing story throughout the night. Stay with us on Valley News Live. In Grand Forks, jury selection is underway for the man accused of killing officer Cody Hulte. Salama Pendleton is also charged with killing his mother during the shootout with police. That trial is expected to last until mid-July. Now here's Hutch with the first look at your forecast. Hutch. Thank you, Stacy. Hello, everyone. The uh, weather today a uh, very great. We have very few clouds. We have temperatures that are summer like but not overly hot. We have a few 70s in central Minnesota and northwest Minnesota. Thief River, you are at 79. 83, though, in Grand Forks and Fargo Moorhead right now. The heat is beginning to build in the central Dakotas with mid 80s there. Sunshine aplenty to the north and west of Fargo. South and east, we have a little boundary working its way through, but most of the showers are off into eastern Minnesota. The heat is on once again. Look at Walla Walla. Fun to say, but probably not the fun to be at today. 111 right now. Yakima at that same sizzling reading. For us, much more comfortable. Low 80s after sunset will quickly fall through those 70s on a clear and very quiet night tonight. I'll have details on your forecast that does take us through the holiday weekend. It does look warm, but we do have a few chances of storms. We'll detail it all here in a moment. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. A Fargo man has been charged with sexually assaulting a young girl for nearly two years. Raymond Vogel is charged in Richland County Court with six felony counts of gross sexual imposition. Court documents say the victim was under the age of 15 at the time of the assaults. If convicted on all counts, Vogel faces at least 10 years in prison. A Fargo man is behind bars accused of stabbing someone over the weekend. Police arrested Abisaman Musa for aggravated assault. Officers say someone called police after seeing the suspect stab another man in the neck on 10th Street South between 7th and 8th Avenues. Paramedics started medical care on the victim before he was transported to a hospital where he's recovering this afternoon. Fargo poli police say the two men knew each other. Police in Jamestown are searching for someone who attempted to steal a UTV. If you recognize this vehicle, contact Stutzman County Dispatch at the number there on your screen, 701-252-1000. The Jamestown Police Department also says you can send them a DM on their social media accounts. As the pandemic winds down, hospitals around the country are still seeing a huge demand for nurses. Two North Dakota colleges are working together to help fill that need. Williston State College and NDSU are collaborating to get nurses their bachelor's degrees. The students will get their associate's degrees in Williston and be able to stay there while taking classes online. NDSU President Dean Bershani says there's a dire need for nurses in more rural areas. A search and rescue operation continues today in Surfside, Florida, where a 12-story condo building partially collapsed last week. The death toll stands at 11, with about 150 people still unaccounted for. Photos taken two days before that collapse show water on the floor, cracked concrete, and damage in the complex's pool equipment room. Search teams are still working around the clock for six days now. Rescue teams have poked in the rubble for survivors, while families linger in the purgatory of not knowing. Miami-Dade officials have allowed the families to watch the operation from a safe distance just to see how dangerous the search is. Now we have family members at the site to basically see exactly what we've done. This is you know, this is unconventional, especially so early in the stages. However, as the individuals continue to work feverishly with urgency, they witnessed a rescuer tumble 25 feet down the mound. That is a perfect example of the situation that we're dealing with. No one has been found alive at that site since last Thursday, but families are still holding on to hope. President Biden has struck a deal with some Republicans to help rebuild America's roads and bridges, but he still has work to do to win support in Washington, D.C. And to get it passed in Congress, he's headed on the road himself to build public support. Skylar Henry has details from the White House. President Biden toured a transit facility in La Crosse, Wisconsin, as he tries to sell the bipartisan infrastructure deal to the public. America has always been propelled into the future by landmark national investments. Investments that only the government 
has the capacity to make. The president says the bill means not only improved roads and bridges, but jobs. This is a generational investment, a generational investment to modernize our infrastructure, creating millions of good paying jobs. That's not coming from me, that's coming from Wall Street. While the president pushes for passage of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, he's also pushing for a much larger budget bill that only Democrats support. Major action on clean energy, housing, caregiving, on child and paid leave, universal pre-K, free community college. The human infrastructure is intertwined with our physical infrastructure. But Republicans say linking the bills could cost GOP support. The only way we can get there is to delink the two issues. They are really separate issues. Democratic leaders have said they can only get the bills passed on their side if they are linked. President Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. The White House is meeting with progressive Democrats who say the infrastructure bill does not include enough of their priorities, like clean energy initiatives. Today marks the first day of the United Way school supply drive. The United Way says it's a simple way to help kids in need and lift families out of poverty. If you'd like to help, you can donate new school supplies or give a financial gift today through July 23rd. Backpacks and school supplies will be distributed at Shields Arena in a drive through format August 2nd through the 5th. Last year, more than 6,000 students were helped through that school supply drive. The Polk County Sheriff's Office is welcoming a new member to the team, K-9 Rex. Just graduated from training as handler, Deputy Stout. The two-year-old is the Sheriff's Office's second K-9. Authorities in Ransom County are searching for the owners of a calf found roaming a rural highway. The Sheriff's Department posted on Facebook saying they found this little calf moved down Highway 27 near Lisbon this morning. Authorities are asking you to give them a call if the baby bovine is yours or if you know who it may belong to. All cattle callers can reach the Sheriff's Department 701-683-5255. The Minnesota DOT is on a mission to save the turtles. We'll tell you what steps they're taking right after the break. A Tuesday evening gem in the making. Hopefully you can get outdoors and enjoy. This is Larry. And Sherry says Larry has important information for you. I'll tell you what that is. Now your forecast coming up. Join me. Weather is next.